what goes up must come down. That's the mantra for most space missions, but it seems Starliner is breaking the mold. Yes, the return date for this spacecraft continues to be delayed. Interestingly, Starliner's new return date might coincide with SpaceX's new progress on the first Falcon Heavy mission this year. Will these two vehicles meet in space? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Last month, many were frustrated and disappointed at the launch of Starliner CFT-1. Disappointed as the launch of Starliner CFT-1 faced continuous delays. Five delays, including three due to helium leaks, are unacceptable for a crewed spacecraft. Despite these issues, NASA and Boeing pushed forward with the mission and now they're facing the consequences. In the previous episode, I asked if Starliner could return on June 22nd. Most of you were correct in saying it couldn't. According to NASA's recent update, Starliner's return schedule has been changed. The notice states, Teams from NASA and Boeing are now targeting no earlier than 10.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, Tuesday, June 25th, for the undocking of the Starliner spacecraft from the International Space Station. Thus, the schedule has been delayed an additional three days compared to the previous plan. NASA explained, Mission teams supporting NASA's Boeing crew flight test continue to review Starliner's data from the completed test objectives. Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's Commercial Crew Program, added, We want to give our teams a little bit more time to look at the data, do some analysis, and make sure we're really ready to come home. Mark Nappy, vice president of Boeing's Commercial Crew Program, clarified, I would add, Steve, that we, we fully intend to eliminate these, you know, call them nuisances uh, for the flight. Once again, we see them struggling with the helium leak problem and propulsion issues. Within a month, Starliner leaked helium five times, from before launch to after it was docked on the ISS. During the approach to the ISS, five of the 28 thrusters also encountered problems. These issues led to the return schedule being delayed a second time from the 18th to the 22nd, and now to the 25th. On June 15th, two astronauts conducted spacecraft tests in orbit. Stitch stated, Certainly Saturday was a big day of understanding the helium leaks have gone down and also understanding that the thrusters have recovered and that we can count on those thrusters for the remainder of the flight. Even though that statement sounded positive, the delay made me feel like everything was quite serious. If everything was really as smooth as they claimed, the work would have been completed early instead of the constant delays. Regarding the schedule since Starliner arrived at the ISS, this is the third delay in its attempt to bring two astronauts back to Earth. The first postponement was because NASA proposed for two astronauts to stay at the ISS until June 18th to support a spacewalk mission. However, this mission was canceled due to problems related to the spacesuit. On the 14th, Starliner's return schedule was pushed back to June 22nd, with the stated reason being to test the capabilities of the spacecraft, thereby preparing for a longer mission in the future. But in my opinion, the real purpose is probably to solve the helium leaks and thruster problems, and now, the third delay pushed the return date to the 25th. If it can successfully undock on the 25th, Starliner's return journey will last a day. NASA added, for the primary undocking opportunity, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, the first crew to fly aboard Starliner, would land at about 4.51 a.m. on Wednesday, June 26th at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. Delayed decisions will certainly cause disappointment, but after all, the decision was made and I hope NASA and Boeing can take advantage of this time to completely resolve all problems. Helium and thrusters both play important roles in helping Starliner re-enter, but they also easily encounter problems during this harsh process. Don't forget that Starliner has many other potential risks like parachutes or electrical wiring. If everything is not secured, the landing will fail. And remember, we have two astronauts inside this spacecraft. More than anything, I hope the two return safely. Expanding on the Starliner issue, the delay of the return attempt will greatly affect activities on the ISS. As I mentioned earlier, the June 13th spacewalk mission was cancelled and then expected to take place on the 24th. However, this mission now cannot take place earlier than the 25th and the 26th because it depends on the process of undocking Starliner, which NASA considers a high priority. That means only after Starliner undocks successfully can the spacewalk mission 
and proceed. And this is obviously another disappointment that Starliner brings to NASA. Looking further into the future, recent incidents will have a major impact on their first crew mission under the commercial crew program called Starliner 1. Currently, the schedule for this mission is set for early next year, which could be quite close to the Dragon Crew 10 mission. If at that time the station does not have enough ports for both vehicles, NASA may have to choose one of the two missions. We can see Dragon now has a big advantage in both performance and reliability. In contrast, Starliner is suffering from numerous problems. Stitch said, I think, I think our goal, Mark and mine's goal, is to, to get the quirks, as you call them, out of the system before we get to the, uh, the phase where we will be you know, using this vehicle to rotate up four crew members and then bring them back at the end of six months. As Stitch stated, unlike CFT-1, the Starliner-1 mission will last up to six months, with four astronauts participating. If all the problems cannot be resolved, Starliner's opportunity to reach the ISS in early 2025 will be abandoned, and it may be postponed to around the end of 2025. That'll certainly create a backlog with this spacecraft in the coming years because the ISS's operating time is running out. Do you think Starliner 1 or Dragon Crew 10 will fly first? Please leave your predictions in the comments section down below. Now, let's assume that there's no change to Starliner's return schedule. We can come to quite an interesting fact. Well, basically, that will also be the day that SpaceX Falcon Heavy launches. The Falcon Heavy's first mission is scheduled for the 25th of June. The launch is planned at 5.16 p.m. EDT that day at Kennedy Space Center's LC-39A. This mission is for NASA and NOAA's GOES-U spacecraft. G-O-E-S-U, which will become G-O-E-S-19 once in orbit, will replace GOES-16, which makes up the eastern region of the GOES network. These weather satellites are the most advanced currently operated by NOAA and sit out in geostationary orbit overseeing the continental U.S., South America, and the western coast of Africa. This satellite is extremely important not just for traditional weather monitoring, search and rescue, and tracking natural disasters, but also for hurricane season. Being able to focus on the Gulf of Mexico and see hurricane forming systems begin in Africa gives meteorologists ample data to track and alert the public about incoming storms. An interesting detail related to this mission, it marks the first time a NOAA satellite will be transported to space using a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. For the mission's previous three satellite launches, NOAA chose the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V 541 rocket to transport the modules to their positions in orbit. So, why is this launch happening on Falcon Heavy? In fact, this is another victory for SpaceX over its competitors. Explaining this, Rex Engelhart, Goes U mission manager for NASA's Launch Services program, revealed the different rocket companies join and sign up with the contract and give us NTE prices in which NTE stands for not to exceed. When we're trying to procure a rocket for a particular mission, we do a mini competition where we give them an opportunity to lower those prices, come down off the not to exceed, and bid to the mission-specific requirements. In this case, Falcon Heavy won that. Indeed, even with fewer launches compared to Falcon 9, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy still demonstrates immense potential. Looking ahead to the upcoming mission, after deploying the payload, the two boosters used by SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket are planned to return to LZ-1 and LZ-2 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This launch will mark SpaceX's first Falcon Heavy mission of 2024 and the 10th overall for this powerful rocket. It's been over six months since the last Falcon Heavy launch, and for the remainder of the year, only a few are scheduled. NASA's Europa Clipper is set to launch in October, and in November, Astrobotics Griffin Lander will use a Falcon Heavy to journey to the moon. So far this year, SpaceX has completed more than 60 missions, with only two of them being Starship missions and the rest being Falcon 9 launches. Falcon Heavy has been inactive in the first half of the year due to technical issues, but this upcoming flight signals its return to operations. Hopefully, this mission will be successful, paving the way for Falcon Heavy to play a more active role for the rest of the year with several critical missions. Let's leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel in order to send our best 
wishes for Falcon Heavy's success. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.